This is as far as he got. The runes simply trail off. I cannot imagine what horrors Gul'dan faced in his final moments. Draenor holds many secrets, dark, dark secrets, and we will discover them one by one. There's a lot of story to cover before Warcraft 3 and World of Warcraft that many people don't know about, and I'll do my best to help you guys on it, but it's going to come piece by piece. Today, we will see the events through the eyes of Gul'dan and Gul'dan alone. As you can tell by the Warlords of Draenor trailer, there are a lot of orc heroes in this time, and they are all important. But we'll focus on one for now. Gul'dan, considered by many to be the most cunning and most powerful warlock of all time. I honestly don't think there's a single warlock to have ever reached his level. Even after his death, his legacy can still be felt in the world of Azeroth. Everything you see before you is his legacy. But we will get to that. Gul'dan used to be the second in command to the Shadow Moon Orc clan, and used to dwell in what is now known as the Shadow Moon Valley in Outland. Yes, guys, Outland used to be Draenor, the birthplace of all the orcs and ogres. This is the beginning of everything that is Warcraft, where it all started. Now, Sargeras, I will claim whatever's left of your power and bring this wretched world to its knees. Anyways, Gul'dan was never what you and I would call a good guy. He honestly never cared that much about his orc fellows and only ever cared about his own power and how to get more. I like to picture him being the bad Aztec looking guy from El Dorado with his weird green magics. Yeah, I said it. But because of this and his incredible shamanistic powers, he was approached by the great demon Kil Jaden. You see, before Kil Jaden became the second in command of the Burning Legion, he used to be an Eridar like the Draenei, but after those Eridar left because they did not want to join the Burning Legion and became the Draenei, which by the way means the exiled ones, the Burning Legion declared them enemies for their betrayal. And since then, Kil Jaden bowed and he will wipe them out at all costs. And that's where Gul'dan enters into play. Kil Jaden and Gul'dan made a trade. If Gul'dan would help him kill the Draenei and Draenor, he would give him power beyond understanding. And so, it was made. Kil Jaden manipulated the Shadow Moon clan and gave enough power to Gul'dan to allow him to become the leader of the clan. Then, Gul'dan convinced all the other clan leaders to drink from the blood of the demon. Not Kil Jaden's blood itself, but from the massive pit lord called Manoroth that was brought forth into Draenor. What future? Drinking from the blood of this demon would give the orcs immense powers, increased strength, speed and size, a green tone to their skin and red glowing eyes. That's why the orcs you see nowadays in Outland that have nothing to do with the demonic hostile takeover are brown. And that's how the orcs actually used to look like back in those days, before they went all Dracula on them demons. The one caveat, however, that Gul'dan knowingly, by the way, forgot to mention, was that drinking from the demon blood would bind their wills to the demons, meaning that they would become easily manipulated by them. The blood would also give them this crazy bloodthirst and make them incredibly aggressive. Gul'dan was more interested in the power the demon promised him, however, and he didn't mind enslaving his whole race in order to get some. And so, the orc clans drank from the blood of Manoroth, all except for one, the Frostwolf clan. Because of this they were exiled, but for now we won't really talk about them. 
I do want to point out right here, there's a lot happening on the background of all this, and we will cover that. I know some nerds out there are freaking out, I know, trust me, I know. Be patient, guys. The orcs, who were already incredibly powerful, were unstoppable now. The Dry Knight never stood a chance and were all but annihilated. Problem is, the bloodthirst and the desire to kill never really stopped for the orcs. Even after they had completely owned the ogres and the Dry Knight, they needed more. And that's when the infighting started happening. Gul'dan, however, had been practicing this whole time with Kil'jaeden. You see, Kil'jaeden's long-term plan was to bring the now-enslaved orcs into Azeroth to destroy the humans. His job in the Burning Legion is to recruit new demons into the Legion for the Titan Lord Sargeras to use to conquer worlds. And that's what he had been doing this whole time. So to do that, he needed to teach Gul'dan how to open a portal from Draenor into Azeroth. And so, Kil'jaeden taught Gul'dan the power of the Void, of Darkness, better known as the Arts of the Warlock. With his teachings, Gul'dan learned how to traverse the Void, how to summon demons from the Void, how to tap from this energy, and how to tap energy from other existing bodies. You know, necromancy stuff. And with this info, Gul'dan created the fabled Shadow Council, a council made entirely of warlocks that would only answer to Gul'dan, kind of like his own clan of darkness. This is where the art of being a warlock all started from. The first warlock school, hell yeah. At this point, you have to assume that Gul'dan is, by far, the strongest non-demon living thing that exists in Draenor. He doesn't know anyone who is even remotely on his level. Until... While searching through the void, Gul'dan found a spirit, a person. A person that moved through the void with a similar skill and speed. When he asked Kil'jaeden about it, he wouldn't respond. A being that Kil'jaeden actually feared. Turned out, this person was no other than Medivh, the protector of the realm of Azeroth. The protector of the realm versus demons, that is. Considered to be at the time one, if not the strongest mage in the universe. His gut told Gul'dan not to talk to him or trust him. But reality was, the orc clans were mutilating each other. With no other enemies to share, there was no other to fight but themselves. So Gul'dan needed to find a new planet to conquer before the orcs would come for his head themselves. And after a bunch of visions that Medivh shared with Gul'dan of Azeroth and his bounties, Gul'dan couldn't resist. You must rally the Horde and lead your people to their destinies. So with the help of Indiv and the Warlocks from the Shadow Council, the mighty Dark Portal was created. A gateway into the Void that would join Draenor and Azeroth together. Scouts were sent into the portal to scout the lands and prepare for the mighty invasion coming. But as soon as the orcs found the humans and realized how small, weak, and puny they were, they grew restless and reckless. A massive invasion force was quickly mounted and launched into Stormwind by the Twilight Hammer led by Shogal and the Bleeding Hollow Clan and failed. The orcs actually failed, and it wasn't like close either. The battle was a complete bust, a massive, humiliating defeat. There was so much tea bagging on the Alliance side, the orcs tasted balls for so long after that. Gul'dan knew that this reckless behavior and leaderless horde could not simply work well for them and would simply end with them being kicked out of Azeroth. And so, Gul'dan manipulated the horde into accepting a makeshift leader for the horde. A warrior champion that would secretly be manipulated by the Shadow Council. This way, Gul'dan would be the actual leader of the horde 
while still being able to work from the shadows. He was, however, being pressured by Medivh to kill the humans. We will get as to why later, don't worry. Gul'dan, though, wasn't that interested. There was nothing much to gain from actually destroying the humans. He really only wanted power, but Medivh knew that. So he told Gul'dan that if he succeeded in killing the humans, he would show him where the tomb of Sargeras was located. You see, Sargeras actually sent an avatar of himself to attack Azeroth a long time ago, but was destroyed by Medivh's mom, who was the protector of the world against the demons before him. After Sargeras's defeat ages ago, his remains were locked away in an undersea tomb. The corpse of this avatar laid hidden within the world and within it untold powers to a necromancer who could tap energy from it, such as Gul'dan, this, <laughs> oh man, this made Gul'dan salivate. If he could only tap into this power, he could easily become something else. He could do things in the level of demigods. He needed this power, and so he accepted. With a new leader now under the commands of Gul'dan, the new orc forces organized and launched a new attack into Stormwind completely decimating it. Guards. This time, the T-backs went to the other side, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first war. Warcraft has had three major wars, and this was the first one. This was pretty much Warcraft 1. Again, there is a lot there that I'm purposely leaving out, since it is a very complicated story and I just kind of want to touch things on Gul'dan's viewpoint. I, I hope that I have your forgiveness and likes. Thing is, the humans realized what Medivh had done. They figured out that he had helped bring forth the orcs into Azeroth and that he had conspired against them. And because of that, they sent a regiment of soldiers to confront him and kill him. Gul'dan heard about this and he could just not have it. You see, Medivh hadn't actually told him yet where the tomb of Sargeras was, and so he needed to act quick. He actually invaded Medivh's mind to read him in order to figure out where the place was. Problem was, Medivh was actually killed while Gul'dan was still in his mind, leaving Gul'dan in a coma. The Horde without his leader was weak, and so Doomhammer killed the puppet leader and succeeded him. He knew there was something fishy with the Horde, and he wanted to see it with his own eyes. A couple of tortures later, he found out about the Shadow Council running business from the darkness, and so he killed them. All of them. Bro literally murdered the entire Shadow Council and all the Warlocks. When Gul'dan awoke, it was all different. Doomhammer offered him mercy in return for Gul'dan's loyalty, and to get it, Gul'dan offered to make him an army he could not refuse. That was a mistake. Fireflies, prepare your anuses because this is it. Strap on, grab your chair or, or couches, where for here it comes. Gul'dan offered to make him an army of Death Knights. Yeah, this is where it all started, dudes. The birth of Death Knights. And it wasn't easy either. Gul'dan went into Stormwind and started trying to resurrect Death Alliance Knights, but to no avail. It just wasn't working. He could do zombies. <laughs> oh yeah, he was really good at that. But Death Knights are not zombies, we know that. He needed them to be smart and strong, and so... He tried something different. You see, Gul'dan still had a bunch of acolytes loyal to him that were not murdered by Doomhammer. So, in a massive ritual under the dungeons of Stormwind, he murdered his own acolytes and grabbed their souls and put them inside crystals. Yes, guys, soul shards? That's Gul'dan technology right there! <laughs> he strapped those soul gems into the pieces of armor and bound their souls to the Death Knights. So what Death Knights are, are pretty much just undead knights being controlled by the souls of others, at least this particular ones. Anyways, this was enough to gain Doomhammer's support, though he was just far too busy in the war effort to really care much for what Gul'dan did at this point. What he didn't know, however, was that the Death Knights were ultimately loyal to their creator, Gul'dan, and not to him, a special detail that will be used by Gul'dan later on, you'll see. Sorry. 
You see, the Horde at this point had pushed far into Lordron and was about to siege the human capital when Gul'dan decided to betray the Horde. Without Doomhammer knowing, Gul'dan took the remainder of his clan with his Death Knights, followed by Shogal and his Twilight Hammer, and left to find the tomb of Sargeras. Nearly 20 years ago, the great warlock Gul'dan raised these islands from the deeps. He sought to unearth an ancient vault that held the remains of the Dark Titan. Sargeras. He managed to find a tomb, however, he failed to realize one thing. Sargeras wasn't about to let his body be used in such fashion, and so, when Gul'dan opened up the tomb, he was surprised by an army of demons that had been left locked inside. The demons went on to shred Gul'dan to pieces, killing him. The remainder of his clan that survived were then killed by Doomhammer's troops for desertion. Much of the Twilight Hammer was also destroyed then, but Shogal himself survived alongside a token army left from his clan, who would go and disappeared for much of history. Pretty sad stuff, guys, <laughs> but that's Gul'dan. He died realizing he had been no more than a pawn for the demons the whole time, and his lost for Godhood was never realized. Ambushed by the Guardians, I am dying. If my servants had not abandoned me, I could have claimed the Eye and... Damn you, Sargeras. I won't be beaten like this. I am Gul'dan. I am darkness incarnate. It cannot end like this. He was, though, still the strongest warlock to have ever lived. So strong, in fact, that many demons, warlocks, and creatures would go on to covet his skull as a source of power for generations. It would appear that he was so strong that part of his soul was annexed and still remaining in his skull with a good portion of his power. You see, the ability to open and close portals through the void is not something that just anyone can do. Only Mediv and Gul'dan have ever done it in such a way. In fact, it was Gul'dan's skull to ultimately cause the ultimate destruction of Draenor. But we will get to that. <laughs> Patience, guys, don't hate me, don't dislike. The skull was passed from owner to owner, like some kind of demonic herpes. Khadgar used it to close the dark portal at the end of the Second War. Demons would go and use it to open gates for other demons to come forth and defile the sacred forest of Felwood. And ultimately, Illidan would then consume and merge with the skull to let go of his elven heritage and become a half-elf, half-demon. Pretty damn cool, huh? That's how powerful the skull was. Imagine the actual Gul'dan nowadays, he would have been a god. <laughs> the mountain in the middle of Shermon Valley? Actually raised by him. He just went up in there and raised the mountain. Bad ass. Now guys, what hero would you like me to cover? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Both links in the description below. Bye, fireflies.